We are now. I mean, I that, sir. Uh, yeah, that's all. After we are live now on the Facebook. I'm going to start right now. Yeah. Um, Right now, yeah, it's up, but I need to boot uh, Facebook. Hello, viewers. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, Good uh, day. Yeah. We are live now on Facebook, and then I want us to. The thing is not. I want to. I'm coming. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me, Shiva Demi? Yes, I am. I can, can hear you. you. Hear me, you know? Okay. All right. Uh, it's a little bit delayed. Our viewers, we have some guests in house. And we have some people joining us on Facebook. Uh, what I want to say is that we will allow the panelists to deal with all the points. So if you have any question, note it, or you have any comment, please note it, or you can post it in the chat box. I'll direct it to any of the panelists or just make it a general question. So, let me start by introducing ourselves. And I want to start with a very, very big fish. If I'm sorry to use that term, because that person is a multiple chiefs in Africa. First, let me say something about the positive impact of social media. The three of us you are looking at now, we are from different continents, different countries. The host is from United States of America. One of the panelists, as we know, is from Canada. And the other panelist is from Africa, specifically Nigeria. So you can now see, that is the positive impact of technology. Let me introduce to you Otumba Akogun Tola. Ademiyi, Otumba Akogu, Tola Ademiyi. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, is the thing, I'm sorry, I click the mute, this button, yes. Yeah. I want yeah. to. Is the thing? I'm yeah, sorry. I click okay. the oh, 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 This button. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I want yeah. to. Is the thing? I'm yeah, sorry. I click okay. the oh, 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 This button. Yes. Yeah. I want yeah. to. Is the thing? I'm sorry. Okay. Like I was saying before that uh, little bit of, uh, can I say it well? It's a second when you're using uh, technology. Otumba Akogun Tola Adeniyi Senior. And when you use the word senior, that means that it's junior. <laughs> it's a syndicated columnist, a media entrepreneur an administrator per excellence, an author, a publisher, strategic public policy analyst, and community leader. A fellow of the Nigerian Guild of Editors, fellow Commonwealth Journalist Association, member, the Writers' Union of Canada, member, International Press Institute and former chairman, MD, editor in chief, 
all jelly types conglomerates. For those who were born at that time, when jelly types <laughs> was in here. And now, it's a retired federal permanent secretary in the presidency, national president of League of Nigerian Columnists, and chairman in Knowledge Plaza. He holds a BA honors in English language from the University of Ibadan. That's a very unique, special university in Africa. A master's degree in charter studies from the University of Lancaster, United Kingdom, and a postgraduate diploma in journalism. He was at a point a visiting lecturer at the University of Lancaster from 1994 to 95. You are welcome, sir. Chief Akabu Otuba Tola Adeni Senior. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, happy to be with you on this, on this uh, yeah. program. I'd like to introduce our second distinguished personality. Honestly, I know many of us would love to have twins. I love to have twins, but I never had any. <laughs> I actually even pray that my end of my child we have twins, but mm, not yet. But we are having to be with us, Honorable Kenji Shogunle. BSC on FCA. Honorable Ken De Shogule is the Chief Solutions Architect of Lead Resources Ecosystems Limited, a strategic social enterprise that is focused on governance, entrepreneurship, and technology aimed on identifying opportunities, stimulating innovation and creating solutions. His company built innovative human capital and enterprises through digital transformation and solution assemblies, academies, convergence, and conferences, which are necessary to significantly contribute to achieving Agenda 2030, which is the SDG goals. Honorable Shogunla is a chartered accountant, a management consultant, an economic development specialist, a digital economy evangelist, a youth cultivator, a motivator, and a mentor, and also a futurist personality. He has a vast professional footprint in providing top quality professional service for leading organizations in all significant sectors, either locally, nationally, and internationally. He recently served as Director General Management and Budget, as well as Commissioner of Finance, Ogu State, Nigeria. I must say to here too, that's the government administrator. I was a commissioner. Honorable Kay, the Shogula is committed to accelerated development through appropriate values, the building of competitive successor generations, and the applications of world class competencies for global competitiveness. He was a distinguished scholar at the University of Ife, great Ife. You can see, we have great University of Ibadan here, and we have great Ife, where he graduated in management and accounting. He attended intensive executive management development programs at the University of Witswater and all around South Africa, and the public financial management program at the Kennedy School of Government. <laughs> Harvard University, Boston, Massachusetts. He was the middle past president of the Agbar Economy Summit, the initiator and board member 
of the Political Leadership Institute, which is the Political Academy and convener of the Digital Economy Advisory Group. He is a member of the Distinguished Abelkuta Club and Lisha B. Elite Club of Nigeria. At the recent general elections, Honorable <laughs> Kaili Shogule was the gubernatorial candidate of the Labour Party in Nugu State. He's blessed with children. Honorable Kaili Shogule, you are welcome to this zone. Thank you very much, ma'am. It's a pleasure being here. It's also a nice pleasure being with you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cerebral. So we will go now straight to our point of discussion. And, and that I'm going to present here with us a PowerPoint presentation. Tony? I want to start from the, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to admit some other people there. And then we will. Uh, I want us to start with uh, Grace. Uh, on, All right, let's just go straight to the point. The topic today is harmony, and this is episode three. I want to welcome everybody to Guided Grace Coaching and Theology. As a coach, we are not counselors, we are not therapists, we are not mental health professionals. So when we discuss certain issues that bother line, especially maybe trauma-informed cases and things like that, or exercises like mindfulness and mini, we don't go into the clinical psychological depth, but we like to give a, a kind of overall and overview, a general view of what we are going to discuss. So this wisdom panel that consists of Otuba Kogutola Deni Senior and Honorable Kainde Shogule will be diving into the mindfulness practices the pursuit of meaning and their profound impact on personal fulfillment and happiness. Let's start with the introduction to mindfulness. And I like to call on Otumba Akogun Toladeni is senior. Maybe to start with the definition and history, giving us the origins of mindfulness or tracing its revolution into modern secular practices. Or you might decide to talk about this course on the core principles. Otuba, please. Well, my understanding of mindfulness, which is in simple terms, in layman terms, is just um, focused attention, focused attention uh, has been traced to the founder of the uh, Buddha movement, and that the word itself um, originated from the core philosophies of uh, Buddhism. And it has to do with um, the, the concentration of focus on a particular on a particular thing and on a particular visual, which in itself will uh, get all the sen sen sensory organs involved. In other words, you, you, you focus, you, the, your mindfulness is actually uh, when you are 
in a state of absolute soberness, absolute concentration. And by that, you monitor everything about you, about your environment, about your sense, about your sensories. Uh, you, 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 you are in control of your, you watch your breathing, you watch your move, your steps, you watch your, you watch everything about you without necessarily uh, giving it any, 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 any judgment or any, any attack. In other words, when you focus in on a particular, on a particular part, either pain or anxiety, you, you have that concentration without, without diverting your attention on anything else, which in essence will therefore give you what we call the wholeness, wholeness in persona, wholeness, 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 wholeness. And that is the core direction of mindfulness, being focused attention, avoiding distraction and concentrating on a particular uh, motif towards achieving your goal. When you concentrate your, 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 your mind, when you, have this, when you have this mindfulness of your environment, you don't deviate from that centrality. In other words, things like pain, like disturbance, like so on and so forth, will be subsumed in your concentration power. And it would then lead to what I call a conquest of a, a short attention span. Uh, what I call the short attention uh, attention span deficiency. So that is uh, briefly in a, in a man's in a, in, a, in a layman's language because like uh, the uh, the uh, leaders just mentioned is not going to be the uh, medical aspect of it. But I may go forth to say that it also has metaphysical uh, elements. In fact, I would like to look at it from a metaphysical angle because with the, with the metaphysical aspect, it achieves more than what another eye can see. Metaphysical, to me, mindfulness can even uh, generate, uh, generate uh, uh, getting can can generate empathy can generate getting somebody in a distance to be involved without necessarily I'm, I'm talking of telepathy without necessarily having the person present in your in, with you, which means you can focus your mind on something that is not even around, not physically around, and you get yourself entangled with that particular object, and you begin to interrogate that object, concentrating on it to achieve your desired uh, goal. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable Shogunla, do you want to add anything to this one? Okay, thank you, ma'am. I think uh, in a, I'll put it in a layman's language and I'm simple because I deal with young people, so I know they need to also connect to this. It's a, it's a unique, faithfulness is a unique woman gifts. It's actually human beings that can actually practice mindfulness because the animals do not, it's, it's, being, it's about being aware, first of all, of yourself and, the, and your surroundings and then not allowing your um, surroundings to influence you. D going within yourself to discover yourself, seeing that you are present at that point in time. And then like, uh, like Papa said, being focused, giving focused attention such that you can reduce uh, what we call mind wandering. Uh, because a lot of uh, the mind does not really stay idle all the time. But you can condition your mind into a state that it does not get influenced by other things around you. And that state will then make you realize yourself a lot more. And through that realization, you can then connect to other levels it begins to elevate you to a super natural level. And that's what Baba was talking about when he was talking about empathy and connection to people that are not even present. Because you are not operating at the realm of just physical. You are getting to the realm of spiritual. 
And Very that true. is why, yeah, that is why people now say that people don't really, and that's where people don't really die. So some of us have had those experiences. You begin to see that you can even connect to somebody that is not present, that's even gone, because you are connecting to spirit. That is where the realm of love translates itself. Because you just then begin to have a, a connection, even whether the person is around or not, is not around. You exhibit that connection of, of love. A lot of us will have a, a, will have a, experienced the situation where you are thinking about somebody, either the person calls you, or the person appears to you, you not know, maybe calls you, and you just say, "I'm just I was just thinking about calling you now." It then means that you are in the same state with that person. That is a state of mindfulness. I need to say that mindfulness. Is a, is a, is a, is a, to describe that state, and meditation is the action towards that state, because um, we need to begin to connect that. So that is really uh, what I can add to what I said about mindfulness. I want to thank the two of you because remember, uh, uh, Otumba, I didn't mention concentration, I mentioned focus. Also, Honorable Kainde Shogula mentioned being aware of yourself. I mean, exhibiting that closeness, that love to somebody. I know that generally, when we want to define mindfulness, which is all put together the way, if I want to summarize it, mindfulness is commonly defined as being fully present and engaged at the moment. That is, you are aware of your thoughts, you are aware of your feelings without distraction, without judgment. And that's exactly what the two panelists have just mentioned, because there's no way you can practice mindfulness without, no, there must be no distraction. When you talk about focus, that is what it means. And this heightened awareness allows individuals to experience life more fully and respond to situations more clearly and calmly. And that's why sometimes, coaches, counselors, therapists, and everything, they ask people, their clients, to do mindfulness exercise so that they can respond to situations clearly and calmly. And then, like we know, the mindfulness is rooted actually in ancient Buddhist practices. That's why I have somebody a Buddhist here. That's what we know is there. I mean, is some of the things that uh, we we gain from them, or we can say it's expected from them to know. Thank you very much, panelists. Let's go to the next. Uh, we are now talking about practical mindfulness now techniques. We are talking about uh, we want to explain different forms such as breath awareness, body scan loving kindness meditation, everyday mindfulness, that is suggest so practical ways we can incorporate mindfulness into our daily activities. So who wants to go first? <laughs> I always say you to to Baba. <laughs> Papa, Welcome. you want to say something here? Yeah? We are all together in this, so we, we all contribute. Yeah. It's, uh, there are many, there are so many steps. They start with uh, what they call uh, mindful breathing. That is uh, like deep, deep, uh, deep breath. In fact, both in psychology and applied other applied uh, applied sciences, they ask you to close your eyes, um, breathe in, breathe out, and the purpose of that is when you are when you are breathing, you you measure your volume, your the, the movement of breath taken in and going out, at that point in time, you, you your mind will be absolutely on the on the breathing exercise. And there will be no distraction when you are measuring your pulse, when you are measuring the, 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 the rhythm of your of, of your breathing. That is one major step that your technique of uh, mindfulness practice. That is, you 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 regulate you 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 are in control of your breathing. You are conscious that you are breathing. You make it look like 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 an exercise when you are breathing, not just breathing without noticing. You are breathing in, and you are conscious of the breathing in. You are conscious of the action and activity of, of breath uh, 
breathing in and out. And it, it nothing can be more, 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 that nothing can require more concentration than when you are watching the rhythm, when you are noticing, when you are gauging the rhythm of, 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 your, of, your, of, your, of your breathing. The same thing like where you, you can also do in walking, when you are walking, you're taking steps, and at that point in time, you, you, are, you, are, you are moving from one point to another walking, but at the time you are walking, your mind is also on that activity. No distraction, you won't watch, you won't look at uh, somebody throwing ball next door, you won't look at, uh, you won't listen to birds chirping. You are concentrating on every step you take. And that also, at that point in time, when you want to have take, take a walk, is a walk of creating and uh, exercising mindfulness. When you are walking, your mind is just on that exercise and this absolute concentration uh, on that particular exercise, which will engender uh, the kind of concentration that we are looking at. Um, there, are other, there are other techniques that, uh, which I think uh, Mr. Cerebral, as I used to call him, they want to talk about. Uh, okay, th uh, thank, thank you, sir. Um, thank you, man. I think um, just, um, it's just being aware of life within yourself. And then, like we said, tied to the first thing about uh, focus, being focused. Uh, breathing, scanning, or even like I mentioned, love, uh, love, loving, and even kindness. When you express life uh, in its uh, acute sense without any distraction, and the way to do it is just to make sure that in those your daily activities, you concentrate on what you are doing without uh, without the impact of uh, or your environment, and you are everything is within you, and that's where um, you begin to you begin to. They bring the power within you out, out. and uh, it can also a lot of us um, get involved in a lot of flurry of activities, and uh, at that time we don't even know what are. Some people say I don't even know myself, <laughs> but when you are mindful, when you are practicing mindfulness, you you are it's intentionality. You know exactly what you are doing. You know what is going on within you. If it is a breathing, you know. If you if you are moving, if you if you are moving your hand, you are moving your body or your part, of, you you can even concentrate on what is going on on a part of your body, such that uh, you can then actually feel how alive that part of your body is, at the exclusion of every other part of your body. And that's what's also called, called about focus attention to somebody that you really love. Concentrate. That's where you even just gazing at that person. You can even communicate without without uh, even speaking. And that gazing actually mm -hmm. translates to even communication itself. So because you are connecting at a higher level. So that's, that's, that's a ways of, and even then what we even call listening. A lot of us want to, uh, what we listen without listening. Uh, we just hear words, or we don't know the, we don't know the meaning of the words that people are saying. We don't, we don't get the tone, to, the tone behind it, the, 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 the implications of what people are saying. We just, just take words as they are. But if you actively listen, you begin to see that uh, you are getting more meaning from that communication than just the words that have been passed to to you. Or you can read, you can read the gestures, you can read the you can read the tone, you can read the even then even see the words itself. Even in reading, you can be mindful in reading. A lot of people can read without reading; they just gloss through. But when you read with meaning. And that's what you see a lot of, particularly in other regions, the pastors, when they, they can, the on, on, the word on can mean different things to different situations. That's then you are reading with, you are practicing mindfulness in reading itself. And you begin to see, that's when you begin to discover what we call Eureka. Oh, oh this is what it means. They get back to you. You then discover the true essence of what you are doing. I think um, that's what I can add to that. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Honorable Kendi Shugulen, and then my darling brother, uh, Otsumba Adini Yitimo. I like the word Honorable Kendi use at a point in time. You use the word intentionally. Hmm. Because the, when you are doing a kind of mindfulness, the practical, it's intention. What is, what do you, what is your intention in even participating in practical mindfulness of the techniques? 
Either it's pain reduction, either it's reducing stress, it's the kind of stress management, or, and then when my brother Otoba mentioned about walking, the only sport I get engaged in now is walk. I love to walk long distance. That's the only thing I can do. And I can't jog, I can't do anything, else, but I can walk. God has given me, enabled me to be able to walk without getting tired. It's only when I walk sometimes and I can't come back. But I discovered that it's during this my walking period that I actually meditate more. Because it's like a nature. I look at what God has created, all those squirrels going on the trees, all those trees and the leaves, their seasons, or if I'm passing through any kind of bush area, looking at what is in there about the animals going in and out, or about the birds who are flying around, listening to the sound of the wind. You know, leaves too, they may sound. That's yes. the only time I do it. That's why I love waiting. So in order to what we're saying is that body scan, I just want to describe, uh, I'm, uh, don't mind me. This is a woman's thing for those who are listening now. My earring is trying to come out. <laughs> I'm trying to fix it back. Even though we are, we are on live, I just want to see that that's a woman for you. I mean, a woman for you. Just give me a little second. Let me fix this earring back. <laughs> <laughs> don't mind don't mind just a few it's good no it's good good uh, let me fix this thing but thank god i saw it when it was coming to trying to come that is being my food if i wasn't mindful i wouldn't know the time it will fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so i just want to maybe explain more on when we say body scar meditation we mean lying down and mentally Scanning the body from edge to toe. Bringing awareness to each part. That's the kind of mindfulness of people. Do. They lie down. And when they lie down, flat, they are now visualizing themselves from the edge to toe. Analyzing each part. And wishing each part probably what they feel or they want it to be there. Also, mm -hmm. when you do sitting meditation, is focusing on the breath, like Otoba Denigi said. Bodily sensations, our thoughts and emotions in a seated position. As we are seated here, some people might even be in the midst of a lot of people. That's mindfulness for you. They might be in the midst of where there are a lot of people, crowd, and yet, as they are seated there, they are in that kind of position, taking their thoughts captive, their sensations, their feelings, that's another practice of making that movement. Also, we have mindful movements, like gentle yoga. Some people like to practice yoga and stretching exercises. Those some people like to, you know, treadmill. Some people like to go on the treadmill and do the way they are doing their treadmill, they could be mindful and things like that. And I like to mention again the benefits and the research about these benefits of mindfulness techniques. For instance, for stress reduction, significant reductions is perceived stress and anxiety. When you practice these mindfulness techniques, you have significant reduction in your stress ability, where you feel oh, you are stressed out or something is stressing me. You have significant reduction. Also, pain management. These techniques improve the ability to cope with chronic pain. Do you know if you have a chronic pain and you go into a kind of mindfulness techniques, your mind can be above and outside that pain, above that pain, and you will not feel even that pain at that point in time. Also for mental health, enhancements of overwhelmed well-being, reductions in symptoms of depression. Honestly, do not let's deceive ourselves. There are a lot of people or a lot of things, situations, in the country, in the world today, is giving a lot of people depression. Many more people are getting depressed day by day. And that's why we are talking about mindfulness. This practical mindfulness techniques will help you in reducing your depressed state. Now, let's look at the pursuit of meaning. 
that is defining meaning and purpose. What do we mean by meaning and purpose? That is, we want to differentiate between meaning and purpose, explore philosophical or psychological perspectives of it. We want to know the role of values, discuss the importance of aligning our actions with personal values, and how this alignment contributes to a sense of meaning. And I like Honorable uh, Shogule to go now. I want you to go first. Okay. So meaning, I think uh, first of all, the meaning to me means uh, why am I here? Good. Why am I here? Why am I living? Why am I created? Trying to find exactly your own person, particularly it stems from even your mindfulness. Why am I here at this point in time? And you begin to then ask yourself, then if, if you can know why, why am I created? Why am I born? Why am I at this point in time, and you begin to then see um, what you are moving towards. And then what you are moving towards, then begin to look at um, intention, purpose. But the first thing is, why am I here? Am I just, that's why I said the issue of um, what we are discussing today are all things that are only peculiar and unique to human beings. And dogs, even an elephant as big as it is, do not have a sense of mindfulness. They don't have sense of meaning. They just exist. And they, that's why they just respond to stimuli. But um, with human beings, we are mindful, we can be aware of ourselves, and we can then begin to ask ourselves, why is, am I here? Why am I doing, what, why is this happening to me? And all of that. It's is actually about the why. And uh, the, we always talk about the, the five whys. Um, in first, you ask, why am I here? Okay, I'm here, sitting down in Abekuta. Why am I sitting in Abekuta? I'm having the discussion here. But then, the why am I doing that? I'm sharing um, experiences and knowledge. I'm also learning. At the end of the day, to do that, to make a better world. At the end of the day, by the time you get to the, to the, to the last why, particularly the last five uh, why, the fifth why, you begin to see something that is beyond you, uh, beyond uh, your comfort today, but beyond, it then begins to talk about purpose, talk about your contribution to, to, to existence. I think that, for me, is what meaning is all about. It's about. And it's the first stage that you never get to for talking about purpose. And then uh, maybe I will take it together because you also talk about values. That purpose then, well, now that I know that I'm here for this purpose, what is my own charge? What am I supposed to then, what am I supposed to contribute and if, if my meaning is clear, most of us, and the limits of meaning is very, is always very clear to people. It's about peace. It's about fulfillment. You cannot hold it. But you cannot see it in physical terms, but you can feel it. It's only the feeling of peace, feeling of fulfillment. It's a feeling of happiness. So that is meaning. But then how do I pursue peace? How do I pursue fulfillment? How do I pursue um, happiness? Uh, then and then begin to then what constitutes peace to me? Uh, what comp constitutes uh, fulfillment? Um, is it in having children? Is it having a lot of money? Is it building big houses? Riding big cars? So we uh, begin to then reflect it and say, okay, how if I have a car, how do I feel? Uh, then you just say, in pursuing that purpose, what are the things that will change and that cannot change? What that is in that people, what is what it begins to talk about character, what is the pattern of behavior that we have that, that, that will reflect that people will know about me, and what is the pattern of behavior that I will appreciate in other people. We start then talking about values. And then what values do we then share? What I reflect and what people reflect to me, do we share it? And then when we when we share, when we agree that that is a standard that we operate with, then we have what we call shared values. So for a possible, in that shared value, you can then connect to a uh, purpose and it really connects to, in terms of an hierarchy, then connects to, to meaning. I think for me, that, those are the those are the things I relate to those terms, meaning, purpose, and values. Thank, Thank you. you. I like the way you have connected the dots between meaning, purpose, mm -hmm. and values. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add, sir? 
Well, I mean, you have someone said it all. I mean, it is important that uh, we begin life with understanding of meaning. It's very important, and that should be even inculcated in, in children from maybe as soon as they start primary school, as soon as they begin, they begin awareness of self. When you have a child who is now aware that he or she is in school, he knows what is called chalk, he knows what is called computer, he knows what is called teacher, and so on. At that point of awareness of a child of being alive and being a human person, uh, the the issue of meaning should be inculcated in that. Uh, it should be imbibed in that person's reasoning, because that is the that is the that is the guiding philosophy for the rest of life. That is it has the the, 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 the world is going to be meaningful. The person was the meaning, the purpose of being alive, the purpose of being here, and. Every child must be taught the value and the concept of meaning as a as a guide towards growth throughout life. Because there's that meaning that will also drive the purpose or will, will translate into purpose. And is that purpose that will also energize the fellow to achieve the end goal of that of that of that purpose. So you have meaning, which is realization, then you have a purpose and then you have the end goal which is achievement and uh, if I want to quote uh, 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 what is the um, uh, uh, Bishop Daosa he says that uh, you first of all you have to aspire well you have to you have to desire then you aspire then you perspire and then you conquer yes you know uh, desire, aspire, perspire, and then conquer, and that is the, that is the that is the uh, the ladder of meaning. You 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 you, under, you understand the purpose why you are here, or you first of all examine yourself and say, yes, I'm here. I'm I'm aware of being here. Then what is my purpose of being here? So it's a it's a very strong psychological term. And um, also a uh, cornerstone of uh, philosophy, because without meaning, most people just run life without achieving anything. And that is why it's important that meaning should be the bedrock of one's uh, development agenda. Yeah. You have to understand, you have to know why you are here, why you are doing anything. And of course, you have to know, you have to understand yourself, you have to know, you have to have a meaning of yourself. And this is even in Yoruba, they say, Yoruba believe that even name, the meaning of a name attached to a child can have uh, a consequence on that child's, on that child's life. And um, that is how powerful and how relevant the issue of meaning is. Thank you, sir. But so, uh, Celebra, Celebra Shogun has said it all. So that's hardly nothing. Well, summarizing so what both of you said, because honestly, I was taking notes. I will say now, let's start with meaning, like you said. Meaning now refers to the significance or value of life, experience, yes. <clears throat> and understanding one's place in the world. That's the way I understand what Honorable Shogun and uh, yourself said about meaning. That is, in sense, that if you want to say it, that is, life is coherent, is significant, and directed. And that is essentially what stands for meaning. So I like to now look at the philosophical perspective and psychological perspectives of meaning by some people. Let's look at a, a philosopher like Victor Franklin. He emphasizes the importance of finding meaning even in suffering, suggesting that meaning derives from our own responses to life's challenges and values. And then in the psychological perspective of it, a psychologist like Martin Seligman proposed that meaning is one of the critical components of well-being, contributing to a sense of fulfillment and life satisfaction. That is, pursuing meaning often involves seeking coherence, making sense of life events, and integrating them 
into a broader narrative. I said, you know, that encapsulates even what the psychologists and these uh, philosophers say, encapsulate some of the things on Orobishogule and Otumba, and then he, what you have mentioned in the analyzing me. Also, now let me go to purpose and the uh, purpose now, from what you, I can deduce from what you said both, refers to the intentional and go directed aspect of life. And that is why the word intentional comes also here again, providing direction and motivation. That is purpose is your intention. It involves setting and striving toward meaningful goals that align with one's values and passions. You have your value, you have your passion, and when you have your intention and you set goals that align with this thing, that is purpose. So uh, let's go now to the role of values. There's role of values where we discuss the importance of aligning our actions with personal values and how this alignment contributes to a sense. Living in alignment with one's values means that actions and decisions are consistent. Actions and decisions are consistent with these core principles leading to authenticity and integrity. And here, what I want us to note here that authenticity, integrity is very important. Embrace your imperfection. Embrace your vulnerability. We should try as much as possible as human beings to be authentic. Not fake. Don't fake yourself. Be authentic, be original. And then your core values will be able to align your core values with this, which is talking about increased meaning, is giving you consistency and coherence. Now let's look at interplay between mindfulness <clears throat> and meaning. Now we are talking about presence and purpose. We want to analyze how mindfulness cultivates a present focus awareness. I think some of this are even be said when we were talking before. We just want to highlight it more. How do we uh, cultivate a present focus awareness that can enhance one's ability to find and pursue our meaningful goals? Who wants to go first here, please? Well, I don't. Um... Mindfulness, which is uh, which is which is the core of uh, the core element of focus concentration, and meaning which also leads to purpose in life. Uh, do the two can then they, they do have an interplay between them because when you are when you are mindful when you have this mindfulness or you have this focus uh, concentration, and then you also have. A defined arising from meaning attached to living, then that the mixing point between between them. And once we have not re recognized that in order to the purpose must be identified. And I always want to believe the purpose itself has to be imbibed from childhood. Purpose, uh, a, a, a child goes to school, that's what is going. And that is why there's always parental guidance from that element you know, When that's really imbibed in a person, that will then go to mindfulness, what that would be with a child. So for, for, for character, for achieving success success in life it is important that from childhood not the thing we are going to look for. from childhood the purpose attached to me the purpose arise from me must be taught uh, and so on and so forth that, that, that once you have that then the concern the focus concentration that you develop mindfulness will now guide you in achieving the goal set for yourself. The interrelationship between mindfulness and meaning leading to uh, concentrated attention to what you achieve in life and also 
will also define your character, will define your responses to other people, will define how you relate to other people, will de decide on how you relate, uh, relate to your neighbors and and relate to your houses and to your loved ones. Uh, oh, no, you have something to say, yeah. Okay, I, I think, um, is it, I see my fullness as that the process of finding meaning, of discovering meaning. You need to be, and that's why it's the process. Yes. I can't see talking, sir. Okay. It's the process of discovering meaning. It's putting yourself, it, it is. On, uh, like in Yoruba, they will say somebody who does not think. Allah like, like Ara Galatia. You know, sorry, it's an international identity. Somebody who does not think. Mindfulness is a process of discovery, of thinking, of putting yourself to put all your faculty together to be able to discover yourself. And meaning is the discovery itself. And then it is the it is then the translation of your meaning. Of your, your, your the idea of knowing who you are that, that can then translate to your purpose. Why am I doing okay? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And this is what I want to do. It is from so that it is the connection. It people who reflect a lot, who meditate a lot, who go through all the body scanning, uh, walking, um, and all of that, they are always in the process of refining themselves to see who am I? What do I want? How do I what what do I want? How do I relate? If you don't, if people don't go through this process, and you know, and that's why a lot of people are in a flurry of uh, disconnected activities. Uh, people are always action, action. But if you stay back and reflect and be mindful, you begin to, is this what I really want? You can decide to now pursue a course or change course because they are now discovering properly what you are meant to be doing. Uh, and that's why, like uh, Tumba said, it's good to inculcate this at the, at the initial stages of life. That's why sometimes in class, um, uh, particularly at the primary school level, we, 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 we they, they push a lot of silence. When anything happens, there's a time of everybody keeps still. So that begins people to, because there is a tendency for people to be engrossed in activities without discovering what is happening. So, so that whole process of silence, of mindfulness, of and meditation helps them to refine and connect to their meaning, to the, connect to their purpose, and then they can then connect to um, their values. And so that is just the, that's all the that's the that's the interplay. And from their values, there's something we didn't mention. So it's what is the endeavor? How do not translate? Because some are below the line. It's like a root and a fruit and a tree. Meaning, mindfulness. I hope you don't see it. But they are there. They are the foundation. But where, where it is now the work, what you do, your job that reflects, that reflects all of the other, the meaning, the purpose, and the values. Is what you are now engaged in that reflects that. So there is a that's that connection around all of that, and um, it's it's a, that's 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 the way. But it's 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 it requires that process. And uh, people need to then go through that process regularly. Um, and, and most people do it early in the morning. Some people do it when they are bathing. So that's where you know you see creative ideas coming. Some people do it when they are walking. So some, some people do it when they are praying. And so they, they will quickly go through that process of mindfulness to get meaning, to get purpose, to clarify their values. And then they will then go and act uh, and an endeavor. That is, that's what we call the job. Thank you. Thank you. I think the word that resonates from both the panelists, they might not use that word, but from all they are saying, it's what I can look at as resilience, bouncing back. Resilience means you want to bounce back. I mean, you want to be refresh yourself. And then when you practice all this mindfulness something, you know, there's a great pressure. Honestly, there's a great pressure in the world today. There's a, a lot of people are under pressure. A lot of people are under anxiety. A lot of people are traumatized in one way or the other. So the only way to keep track of yourself and not lose yourself entirely, like you've heard from our panelists, 
is to test talk to move back because all of this pressure, this trauma, these experiences, well, it affects emotional, your emotional feelings, which makes a lot of people tilt towards mental health problem because your emotions are affected. So mindfulness helps you in balancing your emotional resilience. That's exactly what you have said now that I understand it. Thank you. Honorable Shogunle and uh, my dear brother, <laughs> Otsumba Kogun Toladini Senior. Let's go to the next one. Impact on personal fulfillment and happiness. Definitely, you've even mentioned it in some of the things you have said. When we are looking at happiness and meaning, the differences, the interconnections between happiness and meaning. We have discussed and we define meaning. So what is happiness? Let's talk about it. Uh, we might not go into the PAMA model, which is the positive emotional engagement, relation mean achievement, we might not. Though I might not know it, but what is happiness? What is meaning? What is the differences? What is the interconnections? Then when we talk about sustainable well-being, how do we cultivate presence and purpose that leads to more profound sustainable well-being? We are talking about holistic well-being here. I have some case studies that I will mention later on that I read to people. Case studies and personal stories of some people which we might use as example. So, Ebo, do you want to go first or you want to treat it to your no, brother? No, to your okay. it's, very, it's getting very interesting. I mean, the, the thing about uh, impact on personal fulfillment and happiness. Um, happiness is a very elastic word. But at the same time, it's elastic, but at the same time, to me, it's very succinct. It's a very short word. I always say that happiness is the purpose of life. Happiness, to me, is the purpose of life and purpose of living. Once, you, once happiness is taken away from a person, I think the person has, is as good as dead. Now, uh, without jumping gone, I, I was going to bringing spirituality into this. We are talking about wholesomeness of living, wholesomeness of this and that. Uh, because we may not want to admit it. All, everything we are saying, uh, for, uh, the, even the foundation of, uh, of mindfulness is in spirituality. And you find it in some, in some you, you notice that almost all major religions use the techniques of mindfulness in reaching out. I know that of Islam, they bend, they kneel, they bend, they kneel, and those movements, they have full concentration. And the same thing applies in, in the synagogue and other places of worship. What I'm saying in essence, therefore, is that all this leads to personal fulfillment, that they, because you, your, your life is guided to you use the word resilience, the, your, your resilience and other things will lead to your personal fulfillment, a feeling of fulfillment in life. And it's that tip of fulfillment in life that gives you the happiness you need. Some think that having 50 children will give them happiness or having 1 million houses give them happiness or having 3 billion in bank account to give them happiness or so on and so forth. But happiness is so personal that what constitutes happiness for A may not be happiness for someone for another person. But every human being is desirous of happiness. And I also want to even say, I want to go further to say that even dogs and some domesticated animals, sometimes you find happiness in, in, the, in, 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 in what they exhibit. When a dog is happy, you can see it. When a dog is sad, you can see it, which means that happiness is so cardinal to wellness, to the wholesomeness, and the totality of personality. And uh, to me, therefore, uh, happiness is the, is, 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 is the peak of human fulfillment, or personal fulfillment. And I'll be sure to like, please. Are you still with us? Celebra. 
Oh, they will kind of show Are you still with us? Or the... course, yes, um, yes. I think um, to me, happiness is the outcome. Is the outcome of um, is the outcome of um, meaning of discovering meaning of exhibiting meaning. Is it completes the process? Uh, because you cannot be happy on nothing. The happiness, the fact that happiness is a reflection of the fact that something that, that, that you have desired has been achieved or something that you are expecting has been achieved. And uh, sometimes it may, it may just be food or it may just be money, but you must be expecting it before, um, before you can be happy about it. If it's not expected, then you cannot be happy for no, you cannot just be happy. So I see the happiness as the outcome of um, fulfilling your meaning. And so, so, so it gets, it gets, it begins to make sense. It begins to, life begins to make sense because you have discovered it. You have not said, this is what I wanted. Okay, it's like finding, okay, my daughter graduating. Okay, this is all this effort at bringing up this child is to make sure that he's educated and up to a particular level. Then I'm happy that she has graduated. graduated. So then I'm happy. But if I didn't specify the purpose of education, or the purpose of bringing the child to life, or the meaning of bringing the child to life, then even if the child graduates and I'm not part of it, it doesn't give me any happiness. So that is for me um, the connection between happiness and fulfillment. Okay, thank you, Honorable Shogunle. I mentioned here Pama model, and I would just like to mention you for some of people who probably don't know what PAMA model is all about, though I put them there, positive emotion, engagement, relationship, meaning, and achievement. Uh, Martin Seligman is a key figure in positive psychology. You know, some of us coaches, we use positive psychology. And if you're a Christian coach like I am, we look this along with biblical doctrines. But Martin Seligman, is a very key figure known to many people in positive psychology. And he's the one who developed these components that they call PAMA model. And then the positive emotion encompasses the experience of pleasure, joy, and satisfaction. It is related to happiness as it focuses on immediate positive feelings. The second one, which is the engagement there, involves deep involvement in activities, often leading to a state of flow where one loses track of time. And this one contributes to both happiness, that is through the enjoyment of those activities you are doing, and many through deep immersion in purposeful activities. And that's why when some people, maybe they are worried, you find them if they like to watch movies. They might not even follow or know what that movie is talking about, just laugh. They will mask themselves in movies, or movies upon movies. Some might be music, in meditation, listening to music. And some might be sports, going out and do sports and things. They will just engage and get engrossed in that particular activities. Because to them, that is what gives them happiness at that time, like Honorable uh, Shogunle mentioned about that. Also, relationship. Relationship refers to the connections and bonds we form with others. Essential for both happiness through social support and joy for interactions, and meaning through contributing to and caring for others. I mean, social media, that's as positive as negativity. But when you are connected with the community, and you are not alone. You don't feel lonely. You have empathy from others. When you say, oh, something just happened to me and things like that, you have people who empathize with you and that might give you happiness at that point in time. Then meaning, meaning signifies having a sense of purpose and understanding of life significance, which is central to pursuing meaningful goals and expressing life as coherent and significant. And the fifth one developed by this uh, psychologist is achievement, which is pursuing and accomplishing goals that leads to a sense of accomplishment and competence. 
And that is why some people, they are so happy in their accomplishment. They are happy in whatever they are doing at all, especially they celebrate their milestone. No matter how small that milestone is, they celebrate it because they're happy at that time. I mentioned about giving some case studies and personal stories. The first case study I want to say is John Cabot Singh. John Cabot Singh and MBSR. Let me give you a background of this case. John Cabot Singh is a pioneer in bringing mindfulness to the Western world. Develop the mindfulness based stress reduction, the one they call MBSR. He developed the program to help patients deal with chronic pain and stress. And you can see that what he has developed in transformation, participants in his program have reported significant reductions in stress, anxiety, and depression. And you can see there was a particular woman that was suffering from chronic pain, found the madness ever that change her relationship with pain. And you know, when we are talking about that pain, emotional pain, you can find people float over and above their pain by practicing mindfulness techniques. Uh, case two, this is Victor Franklin and logotherapy. Logotherapy, some people have heard about it. This particular man is a Holocaust survivor. We all know about low Holocaust. He's a survivor and he's a psychiatrist. He developed logotherapy, a form of existential therapy that emphasizes finding meaning in life. So these are some of the uh, personal stories of some people who have used mindfulness, they've used the techniques and things like that. And then uh, we discovered that if you cultivating presence through mindfulness and aligning actions with sense of purpose, can lead us to profound, sustainable, and well-doing. So we'll be moving to the next uh, discussion point now, which is challenges and misconceptions. Challenges and misconceptions. Uh, there are a lot of misconceptions too, and there are a lot of challenges in mindfulness. It's not that all is with something. So what are the common misconceptions? I mean, such a mindfulness being a relaxation technique, or is it a cure for all? We should know. What are the challenges in practice, too? If you have any common obstacles, we can discuss it at this point. Or what is the cultural appropriation and authenticity? Honestly, I, I want to leave it to our panelists, but we know culture plays a pivotal role in anything, in most of the things. The way some culture looks at events is different, especially some cultures that have this kind of extended community, like family and cultures that while you are just on your own, that kind of thing might have an effect. So let's look at the challenges and misconceptions. Honorable Shogule, please. Honorable Kaide Shogule, are you still with us there? Okay. Yes, I'm trying. Yes. Um, no, I think if you want, to, if you want to also give you time. Take your time to look at it. I think my Otuba uh, Akogu, Adeni, you can go while you are getting yourself ready. Challenges about what? Um, misconceptions? Is it about uh, policy mindfulness or challenges about life, about, about uh, happiness? Okay. Challenges about yes. You know, in, even in mindfulness, we have certain challenges. And we have certain misconceptions. I mean, we can't take it all. While some people might say, oh, mindfulness is for all, it's cure everything. Or some people might say, no, it's just for mm -hmm. relaxation. So how do you understand mm -hmm. the, how do we do the balance? Well, I think, I think the, the first uh, the first challenge to my mind when you are talking about uh, is valid well for mindfulness is the challenge of environment. There are in this world people who do not have the pleasure of uh, uh, pleasure of an environment that is that is devoid of disturbance. I cannot see how somebody who is living a concert in 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 in, a, in an eternally displaced camp 
can really meaningfully uh, engage in mindfulness. I, I think uh, the, 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 there must be the right environment. There must be the right environment, even for anybody to be able to uh, engage in focused concentration. There must be the right environment for uh, somebody, mm -hmm. for instance, if somebody is uh, just a shade better than being a slave in a household, it's difficult for such a person to have time Usually, if he has developed, if he wanted to have a regular time for doing his uh, mindfulness techniques, and he does not have, he or she has no control whatsoever on his or her life, on uh, movement or engagements, uh, there is a big challenge there. There is also the challenge of uh, believing that, like we just said, one thing is the care all, and uh, there's no such things. Uh, there's no such thing. Um, even when you have uh, mindfulness, there will also there will be supporting uh, activities that will be able to enhance the 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 fullness and the full import of uh, mindfulness. So that will be that will be challenged. And uh, some people may even say when you when you are doing meditation or concentrical concentration. You could be called upon, you could be disturbed, and people may even say, what are you doing? Uh, some people may even misinterpret it and say that uh, maybe one is losing one's mind. When you lock yourself up in the closet and you are doing this uh, uh, on a regular basis. And um, the misconception about it is also, uh, once you get engaged in it, they will think that you are being uh, insular and that um, you, you are no more. You are no more as sociable as you be as you should be because there are people who spend more time on meditation, on the focused concentration than others. And at such moments, friends, relations, and uh, associates may begin to label one as being different and different in quotes. That's the way my mind works. It's working for now. Thank you, sir. I like the way you mentioned the environment. I like the way you mentioned not care for all because they are very essential. So are you ready for us now, Honorable? Yes, I think uh, for me, uh, I see uh, the mindfulness, mindfulness as part of a, a, an, an equation. It's one leads to the other. They said there are two levels of creation. There is mental creation before physical creation. Mindfulness belongs to the mental creation stage of one's being, uh, one essence. And then uh, no matter how well we do it and it give us clarity, the realization of pop the purpose or the happiness of what we're looking at comes by activity, by physical activity. And so it cannot be a cure hall. It's just a foundation that will now guide whatever activity that one get, uh, engages in. So spending all the time on mindfulness may not just achieve anything. One would just be dreaming. The second part is that it's not just a, it's not a relaxation. It's, it may be in a relaxing mood, but it's not just for relaxation. It is for discovery. And um, it's, it's not that one to one. People have also actually integrated uh, mindfulness in various other forms, in education, even in worship, in the, in the faith. When people are praying, at times when you just need to keep quiet, but what they are trying to integrate in a small form is a bit a bit of mindfulness. That's why sometimes we get a bit more uh, refreshed when we go, when you just come out of service. Um, there's a time for all the dance and the dancing, but it's time for a reflection. And the people of my faith, there's a time where you just have to tell you, say, stay still and just pray and just uh, listen to what God is telling you. So there is a there, there, it's not all about relaxation. It's also can be integrated in other activities. It's also about discovery, and also the fact that it's not complete until, or the, the 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 essence of it will not be complete until we back up what we have discovered in terms of meaning and purpose by activity. That is what I can say on some misconceptions, so that people will not just think it's about once you once you can be mindful, you can meditate, and you can put yourself in that state where you can then connect to yourself. 
he solves all problems. He does not. He just a foundation for addressing the issues that we, of life. Thank you very much. Honestly, I love the comments of both the panelists because when you talk about the environment, it's talking about the cultural appropriation that I mean, certain culture because of some areas or environments, you might not even be able to practice it the way you should, but you could. And then in summary, what I have heard from them is that many people believe that mindfulness is only a realization and strength in league nature, which is not. Because reality, why Magdalena can lead to relaxation and stress reduction, its primary purpose is to cultivate present movement awareness and acceptance. And another thing I can perceive from what they said is that uh, it's not cure for all. Some people might be thinking that, oh, mindfulness might, might make me avoid my problem or make me avoid all my troubles. No. Rather, what it does for you is to make you face the reality of that problem. It makes you face the reality of that problem. So it's not, and then if you are using mindfulness maybe for mental health purpose or for stress purpose or anything, sometimes this is not clear, you know, you might need to uh, align it with some other medication or some other things that might be recommended by your therapist, by your counselor, or by your coach. Mindfulness is just one of those things that might get you to get to there. So we now know the misconceptions people might have about it and some of the challenges that a lot of people might have. But the basic thing is the authenticity of whoever is practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness and meaning in different contexts. Like, uh, let's look at the workplace applications, uh, educational settings, and mm -hmm. in passing, both of you have mentioned it because when you are talking about mindfulness, you keep on talking about the school. I remember you know, Shogula mentioned it, even Otuba, you mentioned about maybe job or workplace. So we have said it, but not just the phrase over it again. And then the community and social impact of it. All right, who's going first? I don't know. Okay, I think in the workplace, um, let me go just go first. It is very, very, particularly in um, mentoring situations, in performance assessment situations, such that, and uh, most times they said you hire people for their skills and you fire them for their behavior. Most times we always look at certificates and the skills they have learned and all of that. But when they begin to ref we operate without seeing this connection between their personality and the work environment. So when you begin, people begin to see this, um, the, these differences, uh, the first thing is to then begin to say, okay, look, are you supposed to be here? What even, uh, and then people begin to say, what, what exactly are you looking for? Um, what, what, what are you looking for on this job? Is it just for the salary? Or it contributes something that connects to your purpose or and your and your meaning in life? Then people begin to look at uh, whether that's the right thing for them to do or not. So it's a very useful tool or useful process for, for in workplace situations to address uh, stress at work, to address low performance, to also address uh, high performance at times. You may see that sometimes people get to a particular role, maybe they have flyers, and they cannot uh, they cannot connect to other people. There's always this issue around um, high flyers who seems to be a Mr. Noel, and then at the end of the day, they, 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 they demotivate other people around them. A, a skillful manager will allow that person to say, look, how is your behavior impeding the, the activity of other people? So it can be very, very useful in workplace situations. And then you've seen people just say, look, um, I think I prefer to be on this level first for some time because I, I need to get connect to myself on this job because work is a reflection of our life. And so if people have that disconnection, between their work and their life, a lot of uh, uh, frustration, a lot of job dissatisfaction will come in. And um, the mindfulness is always, both on the part of the manager and on the part of the person that is being managed. Very, very important. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other points, uh, Otumba? 
No, it's okay. I mean, it's just the educational setting too. Just like in workplace, mm -hmm. educational setting is what I have done from the beginning because by teaching them, and I said educational uh, setting for me does not start with a, a tertiary or secondary, but right from nursery and primary, right from the time a, a child is aware of his or her own being and how it begin to uh, assimilate knowledge and education. And that's where uh, mindfulness should be introduced to the child mm -hmm. and will grow with it uh, and to influence the career progression of such a, of the, of, of such a child. Well, I, think, I think in workplace, when they give us break, you know, in many workplaces, they give you maybe sometimes they allow you to go for 30 minutes or they allow you to go for one hour break to resume and continue to work. And some people might not take it. I think it's part of it because you can't continue to function effectively from like, let's say 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you are closing at 4.30 or 430, going straight down without having a 30 minutes or one hour break in between. Because I mean, having that kind of break needs you to relax. Set yourself back and be better to go back and start functioning effectively in the, in the workplace. It makes you more productive. It makes you, it gives you more job satisfaction. Also in educational settings, like you said, teaching mindfulness, and like we mentioned in one of the talks, that is better to even start it from the uh, pre-K, pre-kindergarten. Uh, you start mindfulness from that person. It gives them purpose-driven practices that will lead them into the higher institutions, either university and university. Teaching mindfulness is very important. So community and social impact, like I said, might we not contribute to having more calm people about? <laughs> Have you ever believed that uh, people are in high tension wire? I don't know, it happens sometimes. Maybe you are driving or you are walking or you are in a mall, you encounter someone and that person just snap. Maybe you say something very, something that doesn't even mean nothing or you are trying to join with that person or you are saying, oh, or you maybe by mistake, the accident, you stop on that person and say, oh, sorry, and the person will snap. If people practice mindfulness, it makes people more calm. It reduces, it reduces stress. It reduces pressure. And a lot of people will be able to interact more socially and be interconnected with empathy, with compassion, and then smile more, become more happy become more joyful around. We have come to the end of the panelist talk on this. We are now on Q&A interactive components and audience engagement. So if you're an audience, if you're on Zoom or you're on Facebook and you have a comment or a contribution or a question, this is the time for you to say something. Anybody in house or outside the house who wants to make a contribution? No. If nobody wants to make any contribution from outside, maybe any of the panelists we could do a kind of roundup, a general roundup about mindfulness, how we can cultivate it with great meaning and purpose so that we end it. Yeah, I, I just want to also add something about how can be it can be applied in the workplace, yeah. particularly in uh, developing strategies in brainstorming and all of that, in trying, or in trying to solve corporate problems. You find a situation where everybody is talking about um, bringing the challenges and all of that, and then people are picking, we call it the process of uh, divergence. And then somebody now calls a break and says, everybody just, let's just go and break. And go, not just because of relaxation break, but to go and reflect on what has been discussed. And then people will then come back and converge. In the tutorials of convergence, people will be bringing new insights uh, from what, what they have had. They will have synthesized 
what has been done to now say, okay, ah, this is what I now glean for what this person has said. It is the, the, the process they have followed in uh, that, during that break period, not just for physical break or rest break. The process of reflecting about what has happened is the process of mindfulness to then say, what are we trying to do here? And how can we get to where we are going? And then you then begin to see fresh insights coming up from that part, rather than just concentrating on discussing all through without any uh, se separation of uh, divergence from convergence. I think I can see the application um, of mindfulness in that respect. And I think generally we should also build um, mindfulness into our routine, into our, into our, into our, into our routine. Some, some, sometimes such that um, uh, we can, re that apart from refueling physically, we have to also refuel almost spiritually. And the, 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 the process of refueling spiritually is uh, mindfulness. That's what I can say. Um, as, as, as just to All right. Uh, thank you. Any last uh, words, sir? Well, I don't know. Mine will be on a literary literary note. And uh, I don't know whether this fits into it. Mindfulness, the aspect of relationships and the aspect of concentration. Um, I'll refer our listeners to a chapter in Dubliners, the book by James Joyce. The, title, the chapter is called The Dead, The Dead, Dead. And it's when you go through that chapter and you, are, you have listened to this talk on mindfulness, you realize that if the persons involved in that chapter had mastered the art of mindfulness, the situation they, they are in will not uh, occur. That is, in, my, in the dead, it, the, the, the chapter says that a person never, uh, uh, it, it is difficult for a person to concentrate without uh, distraction. Uh, it shows a, 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 a new, a new uh, attraction, a man and a woman, one is a widow, one is a widow and or whatever, they, 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 they are in a, they are in a, they are in a restaurant. The moment they, because there's no concentration, the moment either of them hears a music that uh, they are used to, you know, in, the, in, in those days, the whole, the whole gathering will just, the whole meeting will just collapse and the other the man or the woman will just walk out. Because what I say that the dead is always present in the living. And the way that can be uh, obviated a bit is through uh, through mindfulness. That is, you create a new awareness for your new awareness, and then it will uh, help you build healthy relationship. Thank you very much. What are these The dead in Dubliners, Dubliners by James Joyce. Okay. Really uh, understand. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. Honorable, I will put honorable even before Otumba Akogu. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a much people. In fact, I cannot be reading out all these the titles. There are so many. And I'd like to thank my brother, Honorable Kei de Shogule. You have been, uh, I want to appreciate you because you are serving, thank you very much. You are serving the community. I mean, it's not that you are hanging anything from coming here, but you are serving the community. You have shared your skills. You have shared your knowledge to let people know. We're talking here about holistic well-being now, emotional, right. spiritual, physical, mental. That's what we are saying. And the mindfulness is part of the thing we can use to reduce our anxiety, to reduce our stress, to reduce our pressure so that uh, it helps a lot. So every one of us, we should try as a first step to use any of this. So thank you for coming. God bless you. Thank, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you for Bye. The opportunity to have a cerebral in the, in the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, sir. It's always an honor and a privilege. I've learned a lot of it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.